All right, so today I'm going to be starting my second major project. If you've watched a previous video, you know I've just put a solar system in this uh, um, in this trailer. Uh, we've got a, a Sunset Trail M29SS. This is a 2012 model. And for camper of this age, I'm recording this video in 2020, so it's about eight years old. Uh, as you can expect, some things start to fail over time, and one of those is the slide motor. So this is one of the dreaded Schwintec sides. Uh, you can see that it's got this kind of S-shaped track here that the gear works in. I, I'm holding a trim piece up because I've taken a piece of trim down to investigate the problem. And we've got a bad motor. So one of the, sli one of the sides of the slide works properly and the other one does not. I may end up replacing both motors, but the one that's failing, fortunately, is on the side that's easier to get to. So I thought we'd start here and we'll get to the other side if it's absolutely necessary. Now, a problem with this slide is that if you watch other videos on YouTube, you'll see a lot of really glowing ones and very optimistic ones about how easy it is to replace these motors and just pull this trim off and pop the motor out. Well, in a 2012 model, it's not like that. So you have a piece of trim here, and this piece of trim is really a wire mold. So let's pull this away, and I'll show you what we're dealing with here. As you can see, this just pops over a little bit of tab here and hides this wire. This wire is the wire that leads to the motor and that goes down into the floor. And if I kinda get this wire a little bit out of the way here, I can pull down this molding. Now in other videos, what you'll see is this nice thing where when you pull this molding down, there's an open slot here and you can get right to the motor. And the motor is right behind this panel. You can see it peeking out. It's right here, this is the motor. And this is what's gone bad. And we need to get that out of there. Well. In the newer ones, they've got a channel cut there where you can pop the motor out from inside the carriage and uh, pull it out, replace it, throw it back in. Looks like about a 20 minute job. Not so in these older models. In the older models, the instructions, the official factory instructions are actually to support and remove the entire slide room a few inches out of the camper. You can see we've only got about a two, two and a half inch wall there, maybe about two inches. And, um, then once it's out, you can slide the motor up. This is just a C-channel, so you can slide the motor up and out here uh, once this is outside uh, and, and floating in free air. Well, yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, I could pay uh, an RV service center to do it. I'm kind of a DIY guy. This is definitely not under warranty, and um, it's definitely an expensive repair. I think the quote was like $1,800. You know, it's all labor. So uh, we're going to try something different. Um, I'm, again, DIY guy. I'm willing to take a few risks. This is an older camper. And whether or not this is recommended by the factory, I know that I have seen photos of other people that have done this by simply notching this channel. And uh, it doesn't appear to lose too much structural integrity. It is the top of the channel. Most of the weight is supported lower down. Uh, I mean, the motor itself is even only held in by one screw. I've already removed that screw from the outside. So all I have to do here is get that motor out, and we're ready to replace it. And so what I've decided to do here is I'm going to notch that channel. And I won't be doing this on video because I, I'll need to hold the camera. But uh, we're going to be using this. This is a nice DeWalt uh, oscillating tool. And uh, I have bought the special carbide uh, tool tip for it. It's a very fine saw blade. You know, it's I've got it packed for storage. It's obviously going to be flipped around. But um, this is a carbide tooth, very fine tooth saw blade designed specifically for cutting aluminum. And I expect it to go through that channel pretty quickly. So I'm going to make the cut here. We'll see how it goes. And I'll be back on video. Now, um, I may end up having to replace the other side. And if I do, that's going to be a problem. I don't know if it'll be obvious, but if you look down here and you look at the other side, on the other end of the other side is a closet. And having a closet there is an obvious problem for us because it means I can't really get back to this area and be able to get my fingers on it. So I'm really hopeful that that side does not need a replacement and that it's only the side that I'm on right here. If the side that I'm on works out well, uh, my cost for this motor is about $185 on Amazon. Factory quoted me $240. I don't know what the difference is because it appears to be their own store on Amazon. So uh, whatever the story is behind that, maybe somebody can let me know in the comments section. But in any event, I did buy this on Amazon, and uh, that cost savings was more than enough for getting this motor here. Here's the motor. It's not real big, and it just sits up in that channel right here, right behind that channel like that. Uh, so we're going to be notching this channel the size of that motor. So the height of this motor plus a little bit of clearance will leave a little bit of tab at the top 
so there's still some some structural integrity and we'll notch it down to where that motor ends down on the bottom and I'll leave a little bit of clearance and I should be able to pop it right out so let's see how it goes so how'd we do well I was able to get the new motor in so I would say overall the project went fairly well I haven't figured out exactly how I want to reattach the molding here's the new motor installed it was a little bit tricky getting it aligned. One of the things not really shown in the other videos is when you're installing the motor, you can't rotate it. There's a trick where you can use a drill battery and um, get the motor to spin to get it to the right position. I didn't do that. What I did was I went ahead and hooked it up to the harness, but I set it kind of just right on top here where I could see it from the control panel. And I just briefly tapped the in-out button a little bit. Uh, you know, not not wanting to misalign the slide room because the other motor still hooked up, but just enough to get this one to turn a little bit so it would drop down into its hole. I was able to get it installed in there. I got the wiring all set, and I will have to figure out how I want to reattach this molding since there's no plate now uh, to attach it. You'll notice I did uh, nick my wallpaper just a little bit here, and actually it's funny, that wasn't my choice of tool. I was using a reciprocating tool and uh, an oscillating uh, tool from DeWalt, and I've always been pretty happy with that. I feel like I have really good control over it. Now, what's actually happening is we're parked at a storage unit. I don't have the stabilizer legs down, and we had a really big wind gust, and I just kind of lost my balance. It was rocking the camper around quite a bit. We're in uh, the middle of Colorado here, and uh, we do get some big gusts out here on the plains. So in any event, a uh, little oopsie, but it's going to be covered by molding, so I'm not really worried about it. By and large, I would say the project went fairly well. If I had any regrets, I would probably use a rotary tool. Um, mine actually died. I, I destroyed my rotary tool on a separate project recently. Uh, I think it probably would have cut through a little bit faster, and I probably would not have made three cuts. As you can see, I had initially intended on cutting a U, but um, although I stopped right about here, I was not able to get the motor out. I didn't have quite enough clearance to get it out up there. It was just long enough, so I ended up taking this top tab off anyway. And to be honest, I mean, it's not like it's attached to anything. I don't really think it adds any structural support, other than really just giving a way of holding this wire. The top tab had a notch in it to hold this wire up and out of the way. So um, I think I will, at some point, try to find a way to do that. One thing that was interesting for me is how hot the motor was when it came out. So to remove this motor, you go outside, you pop a tab out, and you take a screw out. That's really just a retention screw. It just holds the motor from climbing up out of its channel. And um, then you come back inside here, and you run the slide out whatever it can. So you want to run the slide out about 6 to 12 inches. Sorry, I, I have the order backwards. You have to run the slide out to get that outside screw out. If you're unable to run the slide out, you need to do something manual, either with an override or something in order to help it out. Otherwise, you can't get to that retention screw. Well, I only ran the slide out about a foot, um, just enough to get it out. Uh, and I noticed that uh, when I took the motor out, despite having sat for a good 20 minutes while I was cutting the channel, uh, that motor was very hot. So a pretty good chance the motor's burned out. I think I made the right decision here. I was able to run the slide in and out pretty smoothly after the replacement. So I'm happy. Um, you know, I, I think this was a job worth doing for 180 bucks plus a couple of carbide tool blades and a tool I already owned. You know, I, I think I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you. And hit me up in the comment section if you have any questions.